guys, my name is Katherine, and today we'll be creating our first Google Action with Fulfillment. An action is like an app, but for voice assistants, and Fulfillment will allow our actions to send more dynamic responses, making them a little more fun. In this video, we'll be creating a Google Action that gives us different types of quotes. These may be happy quotes, inspirational quotes, quotes about friendship, etc. In this case, we're just going to stick with these three types. Now, if you've never created a Google Action before, it essentially has three main parts. First, we have our utterances. These are things we can say to the Google Assistant once we're in our app or action. In our inspirational quotes action, we might want to say something like, give me an inspirational quote, or I want a quote about inspiration. We might also want to say help if we want to hear how to use the action again, or stop if we want to exit out of the app. These are all utterances that we'll need to build into our action. The second part is to create intents, or meanings that our utterances will be mapped to. We can say a lot of different things that have the same meaning. For example, give me an inspirational quote and I want a quote about inspiration have the same meaning, so they would be mapped to the same intent, which then we would program a response to. Similarly, to exit out of the app, we might want to say stop or quit, which both have the same meaning and intent to exit out of the action. However, help and stop have different meanings, and so they would be mapped to different intents. The last part we have is the response. It's essentially, what do we respond with when we get a request with a specific intent? For example, if someone said, I need an inspirational quote, the program, after it's configured, would register that utterance as an intent to get a quote, and then create a response that would make the Google Assistant say a given quote. Sometimes this response will be hard-coded, as we did in our SoulCycle dialog flow example, or it could be dynamic, allowing for different responses depending on what is said in a specific utterance. This will all make sense in a minute, but essentially there are three parts, utterances, intents, and the response. Keeping this in mind, let's go to Dialogflow and start creating our Google Action. If you haven't used Dialogflow before, it's pretty easy to pick up, but if you want something more in depth, check out the tutorial in the description box. So now we're up and running, and what I've done so far is just gone to dialogflow.com, logged in with my Google account, and started creating a Dialogflow agent. So here for the agent name, I'm going to put inspirational quotes, and we're going to keep all of this the same and click create. And what this is going to do is create our inspirational quotes dialog flow agent. Throughout the course of this tutorial, we'll be building this agent so that later on it can be integrated with a variety of platforms, including the Google Assistant and Facebook Messenger. All right, so now our agent is created. We get two intents for free, the default fallback intent and the default welcome intent. The welcome intent is basically for when the user starts using your bot. It allows you to automatically send a welcome message at the beginning of the user's experience. The fallback intent is for when the bot does not understand what the user is saying and cannot match the user's utterance to an intent. That's what triggers this fallback intent. The fallback intent, depending on how you configure it, can automatically send a response to the user letting them know that the bot did not understand them. We'll leave these two intents here for now, but what we're really here to do is to create a new intent. And this new intent, we're going to call it the need quote intent. So up here we'll write need quote, and this is for when the user is asking for a quote. They're saying, I want an inspirational quote, I want a quote now. When they're asking for a quote, this is the intent that will be triggered. Now there's a lot of things we can configure here. We are going to start with the training phrases, and basically these are going to be the things that the user can say to trigger this intent. And so in order to invoke this intent, we'll say, I need an inspirational quote, give me a happy quote, I want a friendship quote, I want a quote about happiness. So whenever the user wants to hear an inspirational quote, they'll say something like, I need an inspirational quote, give me a happy quote, etc. This intent will be triggered. And then what response should we give to the user? Well, right now we're just going to hard code a response. And in this case, it'll just be life is 
what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. So there we go, that's a quote. We can go ahead and save this. The way we access this quote as the user, the user would say, I need an inspirational quote, need quote intent is triggered, and then basically Dialogflow will send back this hard-coded response. Now, if we go to the right here, of course, we can test this out. We can say, I need a quote, or I need an inspirational quote. And there we go, we get this default response, the hard-coded thing that we just put into the responses. Now, every time we ask for a quote, we're gonna get the same response because we've only given it one option for a response. We could add more quotes and it would randomly choose one here, but again, our responses would always be that same set of quotes no matter what type of quote we're asking for. What we really wanna do is add a fulfillment. Essentially, in this tutorial, we will be setting up a webhook that allows us to pass information from the user's utterance and ultimately their intent into a web service and form a response from it. However, before we do all of that, we will need to create a custom entity. A custom entity will allow us to pull out the type of quote the user wants. So if we go to entities over here, we're going to create an entity, and this will allow us to pull out happiness or friendship or whatever type of quote they want, and then be able to customize our response in the fulfillment. This will all make sense in a minute. And so here I'm going to say type of quote, and then what are the different types of quotes? Well, in this case, we'll say happiness is going to be one type of quote that you want to hear. You want to hear a quote about happiness, something about inspiration, or something about friendship. And then, of course, all of these have synonyms, and so basically different ways to say happiness or mean happy. Um, so we're going to put those in here, and then same for the other values. All right, so now that we have our synonyms in, we'll go ahead and save this and then edit our utterances that we put in the need quote intent to use this type of quote entity. So let's go back to intents. We'll go back to need quotes. And then we'll go ahead and modify these. So I'll actually delete all of these and say these again. And now notice we're able to pluck out the type of quote that it is. And so inspirational, we found that type of quote, great, there we go. We'll try happy. And there we go, we are able to pull out happy. And then this will be the same for the others. Now essentially, this type of quote entity is a parameter that the user provides a value for. We can force the user to respond with a quote type. We won't do this now, but it's important to know that you can if you wanna do that later. Now on to fulfillment. This is why you're here. Ultimately, the fulfillment is where we're gonna form the response, and that is gonna be done with code, in our case, JavaScript. Basically, what we're gonna do in this fulfillment is we're gonna capture the parameter value, basically figuring out what type of quote the user wants, add an if statement to basically say, if it's this type of quote, give this response. If it's this type of quote, give this response. And it will help us make this bot a little bit more dynamic. So let's get started. We are gonna go ahead and click Enable Fulfillment and we are gonna save this. And then we're gonna to go to our Fulfillment tab on the left here. Now I know I said you can use a webhook and that is true. You can basically use a webhook to link your server, your web service to Dialogflow and basically Dialogflow would ping your service saying like, hey, I have an intent. Go ahead and figure out what response I should send. Okay, let me go and then the server would give back that response and then there you go and it's attached through a webhook. To make things a little bit easier, they actually have a version within Dialogflow where you can just write the code right here. So you don't have to go to the process of you know, doing you know, a webhook and putting your code somewhere else. Obviously, if you're creating a bigger chatbot, that would be ideal, but for something as simple as what we're doing, we're gonna use this inline editor, meaning it's already all in the same bundle for us. We don't have to worry about spinning up a web service and doing all of that work. We can just write the code right in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually delete all of this code. We're gonna do this completely from scratch so that you guys know exactly what's going on in the code. The first thing we're gonna write is const functions equals require Firebase functions. 
And basically what we're doing here is we are importing the Firebase Functions module. It'll give us some extra functionality that we're going to need here for this application. We are also going to do const dialog flow, and we're going to require another module that is actions on Google. So these are all things that are going to make writing code a little bit easier because we're importing these fun this functionality, we're importing these modules, and then we're putting their functionalities into functions and then dialog flow here. Now we're going to create a couple of more constants. Each of these is going to hold the names of our intents. And so we'll go default welcome intent, const fallback intent equals default fallback intent. And these strings should match exactly what the name of your intent is in intents. Next, we're going to create a constant called app, and it is going to hold a dialog flow object. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to add things to this dialog flow object. We're going to add our responses in, so that way our dialog flow agent knows what to say to the user. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to plug in the response for the welcome intent. And so basically when the user opens our bot, what do we want them to see? We'll use our constant welcome intent. So we're going app dot intent, what intent, the welcome intent. And then we're going to create a little function in here. If the syntax looks a little crazy, don't worry. Most of it will have the same format of app dot intent. Basically what we're doing here is we're saying for the welcome intent, when it's triggered, what do we want you to do? Well, we want you to do welcome to the quote generator ask for a quote about happiness, friendship, or inspiration. And there we go. So basically what we're doing here is when the welcome intent is called, go ahead and send this response. Ask the user about what's in these double quotes. And although this isn't a question, we're still asking the user for information. We're asking them to send a quote, you know, to, we're asking them to ask for a quote about happiness, inspiration, or friendship. And basically we're going to do this for all of our intents. Essentially this is a coded way to do what we were doing with the visual interface within Dialogflow. So we'll say app.intent and in this case we'll use the fallback intent. And so what do we want to happen when we have the fallback intent? Well we'll say com.ask, I didn't understand your request. And then what about the need quote intent? We can say app.intent need quote intent conf. What do we want to happen then? Well, in this case, we're still going to give it that hard-coded response. We are going to check for that parameter for that entity for type of quote, but not yet, just to get used to what it's like to work with this on a coded interface. And so if we go what people tell you, no matter what people tell you, words and ideas change the world. There you go. And then at the end of it all, we'll go exports.dialogflow firebase fulfillment. And we have to call it this in order for it to work. Functions.https on request. Um, so basically, we're going to go ahead and send the app object back as the fulfillment. We'll go ahead and click deploy. Now while that's deploying, we can go ahead and check our fallback intents and welcome intents to make sure that they're using the fulfillment. So if we scroll down, we can go ahead and, oh look, we're deployed. But first, let's go ahead and set enable webhook, click save, and this will basically tell Dialogflow, use whatever you're getting from the fulfillment, don't use this text response. And then we, we go back, um, we'll do the same thing for the welcome intent. So now let's try entering something that the user doesn't understand. So if I go like this, again, right now it's going to go directly to this, but if I go into the diagnostic info, we can see exactly what the fulfillment response was. And if we click this, we see the text-to-speech, this part, is exactly what we expect. Then let's go ahead and try, I need an inspirational quote. 
check that diagnostic info, click fulfillment. Oh, here we go. We get an error, not found for intent, need quote. That means I probably misspelled something. I feel like I put a space in my fulfillment and not here. So I'm going to put a space in that name and then we should be good to go. So let's put a space. We'll save this. Um, it's going to train for a second and then I'll call it again. And there we go, we get that text-to-speech as no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world, which is exactly what we put in the fulfillment. Of course, you know, why did we do that? You know, why go in here into the JSON instead of like looking at what's in the dialogue flow thing there? You know, why go to all that effort to write the code? Well, you haven't seen exactly what we can take advantage of yet, but you soon will. Basically what we can do in the fulfillment now is write an if statement saying like if you're asking a quote about inspiration versus if you're asking a quote about friendship, we can send you a different specific quote. So instead of this, if we went const quote type, so we grab the type of quote that the user is asking for, we go conv.parameters. So this conv variable basically holds our request object. So we can go into that request object and get certain information about it, like what is in the parameters. And basically we can grab the quote type entity. We will create a constant up here that basically says the quote type entity, the name of it is type of quote. And the reason why we put our strings up here is so that way if we ever wanna change the name of something, we can only change it it makes it so that we're, we can change it once and it affects everything in the code. It's just something to make our lives a little bit easier and make our code a little bit more readable and easy to change. And so we'll go quote type entity, basically grabbing you know, the value for the parameter of quote type entity. And then to get that value, we will want it lower cased. So that way we can compare it to various strings. And we'll basically say if the quote type is inspiration, then we can go ahead and give them this quote. Otherwise, if the quote type is happiness, then we can go ahead and give you a different quote. So there we go, now we have our if else statements. If the quote type is inspiration, then we go ahead and give them that quote that we wrote earlier. If it's happiness, we give them for every minute you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. For friendship, we say there are no strangers here, only friends you haven't met or you haven't yet met. And then if they don't give us a quote type, if the user does not say, you know, I want a quote about X, we say life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So here we're customizing what quote we give based on what the user said. We're giving something new that's based on what the user said, but we don't repeat what the user said. That's important. So let's go ahead and deploy this and test it out again in our console. We'll also go back to our need quote intent and add a quote that doesn't use um, a parameter, doesn't use a quote type. And so we'll just say, I need a quote. I want a quote, give me a quote. So let's go ahead and save our need quote intent as well. And then we can go ahead and test out, I want a quote about uh, happiness. And so we'll see if we get that happiness, that quote about happiness back. And again, we're gonna have to check that diagnostic info. We'll go to fulfillment response. And here, I think we misspelled something. So let's go back. So we'll go back to fulfillment, and I think it's because the parameters is not a function, it's an array. And so basically we're, ask, we're accessing that entity in the array, and so let's go ahead and save that again. All right, so now let's go, I need an inspirational quote. We'll see what we get in that diagnostic info. And again, we get the no matter what people tell you, so that's good, but what about a quote about like happiness? And so we say, I want a quote about happiness. We'll see what we get in the diagnostic info. And this JSON object is exactly what your platform of choice, your integration of choice would receive. And so you would get that for every minute you are angry, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, so that is good. And then we can assume the friendship one works, but what about just I want a quote? Give me a quote. Let's go ahead and check that diagnostic info. We'll get that fulfillment response of life can only be lived backwards, blah, 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 blah. Awesome. With chatbots becoming more popular, Dialogflow is soon coming out with environments which you can use to set up separate environments for testing, development, and production, and control which version of your agent is used in each environment. This is not something that's available now. It's available through beta, but it isn't official yet. Um, but it's something coming soon, and you can access it through the gear up here. For now, we are going to integrate our chatbot with the Google Assistant because that's the simplest, and basically deploy it onto that platform, and you'll see that it hits our fulfillment and does not use what's in Dialogflow's framework. Um, so let's go ahead, all of that is good. If you want more details on this, there's a live video linked down below. We'll go continue to test, and this will all load up, and then I'll show you the final version. All right, so now we're in the simulator. I can just say, talk to my test app. And there we go, the quote generator pops up and we get our welcome response that's from the fulfillment, not from what is in the actual dialogue flow editor. And that's because we have that check mark on the fulfillment. So I'll say just to give me a quote and it'll give me that quote. Basically, if I don't give you a quote type, it'll give me that default quote, which we'll see here. And then we can give it another quote. We can say, you know, I need a quote about friendship and it'll give, me, it'll give me a different quote bit about friendship. And so there we go, now we're integrated with the Google Assistant, and again, all of these integrations are gonna pull from that fulfillment, not from the editor. I'm not sure um, why the, like when I say I need a quote, that it doesn't pull from that fulfillment. I think it's really strange and it doesn't give you an option. Um, if you know how to fix this, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm not sure, but for now, to test your fulfillment, um, of course, you can write unit tests and all of that um, and do it all locally, but you can check this here as well. Now, of course, this is all still hard-coded. If we go to our fulfillment, you know, we're still, every time we ask about happiness, we'll get that one happiness quote. Every time we ask about inspiration, we'll get that one inspiration quote. Now we're able to customize our response based on what the user says and give them something back that doesn't include exactly what they said, but it's still not 100% dynamic. Every time I want to change the quote, I still have to go to in here into this, you know, editor and change it. Well, the way you can get through that or over that is by using an API, finding an API that deals with, um, that has, basically is a quote of the day. Maybe you can take an inspiration quote of the day, a happiness quote of the day, and a friendship quote of the, a quote of the day from a separate server. So basically, you know, someone else out there loves quotes, is obsessed with quotes. Go ahead, pull their data into your application, of course, through an API that they're giving out, and you can basically pull that data into your application and make it accessible through this. That's how you would make this truly dynamic, is if that quote was changing consistently without you having to input it every single time into this. Of course, someone has to input it at some time, but you don't want that to be you. You also may have thought it was really annoying to write all of your code into this. Well, do not fear, you can also do this all locally and then deploy to a web service or to a server um, and basically use the webhook here and create a webhook and do all of that good stuff. Um, but you're not gonna be able to do this type of thing locally. You could write it all locally, test it locally, and then put it into this. But if you wanna do something other than that, then you're gonna use the webhook. So that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more technical tutorials. And if you want something a little bit more in depth, be sure to check out my LinkedIn learning courses linked down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good week.